Hello, one and all present here. This is Amit Kumar Singh and welcome to my first class on biology. And in this class, we'll discuss the transport system in plants. So when we talk about transportation in plant, that is all about a mechanism through which a substance which can be produced or synthesized in one part of plant can be transferred to the another part of plant. So when I say this definition here, the role of photosynthesis and the and the mechanism what fluum do to make sure that the manufactured food should reach to the all part of plant should look more much more appropriate but that is according to me that is not 100% appropriate so if you refer any book on transportation in plant that chapter in biology you will get to know that uh, that this definition, if you read this, you will find this definition to be a little bit incomplete because when I am saying that, uh, reading from the lines from the book saying that transportation in plant is the process in which the substance absorbed or synthesized in one part of plant, they are moved into the another part of plant. So this looks that once the photosynthesis is being done, and when the photosynthesis is done, the glucose is being formed as a byproduct of the photosynthesis, which is the food for the plant. So that glucose is being transferred to all part of plant in the form of sucrose. Okay, and, and that sucrose is gonna be transferred to different part of plant where the sucrose, if it being required, the different cells or tissues of the plant will use them. Otherwise, if they want to store it, they can store it in the form of starch. So when I say this definition, this definition looks that we are only talking about one part of mechanism where we are talking about once the food is being prepared, once the food is being prepared, then that food, when it is being transferred to all part of plant, which is basically a bi-directional flow, which is basically a bi-directional flow, which is basically one minute, which is basically a bi-directional flow. Which is basically a bi-directional flow. So where the fluum will transfer whatever is being manufactured in the leaf of the plant to all part of plant. And that is basically done by fluum. Okay, that is basically done by fluum. So, so that way, this, this definition looks much more appropriate. The food, what is being manufactured in the plant, that food is basically a glucose. And, and once the food is prepared, the fluum transferred to the all part of plant. So we have different component of fluum. Either they are seed groups or either their companion cell or fluum parenchyma or fluum fiber. So they, they make sure that uh, once the food is prepared, it transferred to all part of plants. But transportation system is not only about the manufactured food, what is being prepared that should be transferred to all part of plant and the work is done. So you need to understand that food, what is what we are talking about, that food, which is your glucose. So that food is basically a byproduct of a process which is we called as a photosynthesis. And in this process, you need majorly two raw material. One is carbon dioxide, another one is water. So the carbon dioxide with water, when it reacts in, with, in the presence of sunlight uh, in the leaf of the plant, why they are green in color? Because of chlorophyll, they made glucose and they release oxygen. So this carbon dioxide, what is requiring in photosynthesis is basically uh, diffused from the atmosphere uh, by the stomata, which is present in, in lower and upper epidermis of the plant cell. And that stomata, which is basically kidney-shaped structure, so protected by guard cell, that stomata absorb the carbon dioxide and then the, the leaf have the carbon dioxide. Sunlight is already uh, is there so you know that sun, we uh, we have sunlight in the daytime the plant manufacture the, the their food so we have play in plant cell we have palisade mesophylls so palisade mesophylls uh, basically they work to absorb the sunlight and that way the plant cells uh, of leaf they get the sunlight 
So, and then the sunlight work is also done. But the next thing, what we are ignoring here in the definition, if I'm saying that, if I'm saying in the, in the, in the definition from the book saying that transportation in plant is the process in which the substance absorbed or, or synthesized in one part of plant is moved to the another part of plant. So here, here we need to look into the another component. That component is is the is the is the component which is being absorbed. So which is absorbed by whom? So it is being absorbed by whom? It is absorbed by the root system of the plant. So the root system of plant play very significant role here. So the root system of the plant play very significant role here. Where the what the root system basically do? This root system uh, makes sure that the plant, uh, or, or specifically, I should say, the leaf of the plant should get water. The waters and the nutrient, uh, nutrient, either it is macronutrients like uh, magnesium or phosphorus or potassium or nitrogen, whatever the majorly uh, the nutrients or minerals, the, the root system makes sure that uh, those nutrients uh, should reach to the a leaf of the plant and and how it leads to the leaf of the plant how that is possible because we have a mechanism we have a mechanism which do that part so the mechanism will do that part from from the root here to the leaf of the plant that mechanism is basically done through a tissue which we call as xylem so some together of xylem plum phloem we called as a vascular bundle. So these tissues, which are basically called as conduction, conductive tissue in the plant, we have xylem, we have phloem, and some together of them, we call them as a vascular bundle. So the vascular bundle uh, are, are the conducting system in the plant. They make sure uh, that, that the transportation of water, mineral, and the food uh, is being done from one end to the other end. So the raw material required for the photosynthesis, which is uh, which is water and mineral, that is basically absorbed by the root hairs, root hairs which are the part of root. So root hairs, uh, by the process of osmosis, they absorb water, and by the process of active transport, they absorb mineral from the soil. And once those are being absorbed, then then they have to work against the gravity. So thereby, the, 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 the molecular property of liquid, uh, the theory of, of, of force of cohesion and force of adhesion, which results in the development of capillary force, and that capillary force, which ultimately creates transpiration pull in the plant, and that, that works against the gravity, and that ultimately make responsible that the water and mineral should reach to the end part of the plant which we called as the leaf of the plant where ultimately the food for the plant is being manufactured so i hope you are understanding this part more detail on 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 photosynthesis and and to talk more about chlorophyll and to talk more about uh, stomata we'll do in the in the upper sections uh, like probably once we go to ninth class or maybe in 10th class we'll try to focus more on them but for the time being of uh, the in this chapter we only concentrate our discussion on the transportation system in plant where we'll try to talk about the 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 the, the role played pivotally by xylem and phloem so xylem uh, basically uh, works unidirectional when we say xylem xylem basically works unidirectional so from the from the root it makes sure that the water mineral should reach to the leaf of the plant. So the, the, the process through which water and mineral, the, the process through which water and minerals, which are absorbed from the root hairs, the process through which the water minerals absorb from the root hair, the process from which the water mineral absorbed from the root hair, absorbed from the root hair, reach to the reach, reach to the the, uh, you can say of the plant, of the plant, the process, the process to which, if I say the process to which water and mineral, 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 the process to which water and mineral,
water and even the which are being absorbed from the root of the plant reach to the leaf of the plant. That process is called that process is called the accent of sap. The process is called this process when we say this process is called accent of sap. The process called extent of sap. So you can remember this, this process called extent of sap. So, so this this process through which this water mineral, which is absorbed from the root hairs, ultimately it leads to the uh, leaf of the plant, which we call the extent of sap. And this movement of water mineral to the upper end of the plant so that they get the required raw material for the production of food, that movement is unidirectional. While the, the once the food is being prepared in the form of glucose, the once the food is prepared in the form of glucose, this is this is glucose. So once the food which is prepared in the form of glucose, so this food. This this food which is being prepared in the form of glucose, this food ultimately this this food which is prepared that is there in the form of glucose, which is C6H2LO6. And then then what phlegm do? Phlegm works bidirectional. So phlegm works bidirectional where it makes sure that the manufactured food should reach to the all part of plant for the nutrition purpose. So the transport of manufactured food happens in the form of sucrose that 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 transfer happens in the form of sucrose and once once different tissues are uh, reach the the manufactured food in the form of sucrose then specifically uh, specifically parenchyma and polenchyma uh, those um, parenchyma and polenchyma cells of the plant what they basically do uh, they try to store those foods and when they're storing they store them in the form of starch so you can remember this is i think this is very important and this is also very important that xylem works on unidirectional flow of water in mineral which we call as extent of sap which we call as extent of sap and and the fluum uh, conduction what fluum do that is bidirectional so from the leaf, whatever the food is manufactured, it goes to root, it goes to stem, lower part of stem, it may go to the upper part of, of stem, anything, it, 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 the transfer happens in both the directions. So that 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 um, that transfer happens through fluum. So fluum is uh, basically uh, made of four components, fluum, uh, when we talk of fluum, uh, fluum tissue, so we, when we talk of fluum tissue, Fluum tissues consist of four types of cells, either they're sleeve tubes, either they're companion cell, either they're fluum parenchyma, or either they're fluum fiber. So if not only they, they make sure that the food should reach to the all part of the plant, at the same time, they also involve in the storing of food also. So, so sleeve tube, companion cell, fluum parenchyma, all are living, okay, and, and while the fluum fiber is non-living. And it's basically, fluum fibers basically work in providing the mechanical support in the plant. So, C tubes, you can see that it's formed of cylindrical cells are uh, devoid of nucleus. So, C tubes don't have nucleus. So, they have openings at their end, which we call that as sleep pits. So, we that those openings, uh, they have perforated ends, end to end openings, which we call as sleep plates. And so, sleep plate plates, the food. Uh, get transferred from one cell to another cell. Then you have companion cell. So companion cell uh, work according uh, with the with the seed tubes in the in the transfer of food. Then we have fluum parenchyma, which is basically their living uh, living parenchymatic cells, which along with transfer basically mainly work for the storage of food. While you have fluum parent fiber, which are basically dead. Scalene time cells, okay. So they, they only work for the mechanical support for the plant. So the, another part of vascular bundle are xylem. Xylem is basically made of four types of cells. So those are trachied, those are vessels 
xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber so trachea vessels and xylem fiber they are basically non living they are made up of skeletal kinetic cells uh, which have a uh, while while trachea have tapering end so tapering end of, or very pointed end at uh, while while the vessels are basically they are like a tube like uh, structure which are connected or joined end to end basically responsible for the for the transportation part okay while xylem fiber is more about giving um, like mechanical strength to the plant okay so so the, they're basically more into into that component while xylem parenchyma are living cell they are small thick wall cell where they they may sometimes if required they can do storing of food also so i hope uh, you have have understood the components of vascular system the components of vascular system they are either xylem they are phloem you should know the the difference between xylem and phloem how they are different so the difference of xylem phloem can be can be important sometime so you should be aware about the difference okay you should remember that cells of from which a xylem tissue is made up of you should know the cells of which phloem tissues are made up of so once you are aware about those part and you know about transportation of food like the food in manufacture in the form glucose uh, it is being stored in the form starch and it being transferred from one end to another end in the form of sucrose so that part you should be aware about then then the next thing uh, we if we try to understand uh, we we can understand that this water which is being absorbed this water which is being absorbed by the root hair of the cell these water these mineral ultimately they they work on in development of conduction system in the plant so they are responsible for conduction system in the plant and and when we talk about a uh, working of these conduction system how water is, is so important for the plant how water is so important for us i hope you know that so so this water act like a raw material in the food production of the plant so okay, the same water ultimately make sure that uh, that the uh, that the minerals should reach to the all the ends of the plant because plant need lot of minerals that they 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 need micronutrient they need macronutrients like nitrogen phosphorus potassium manganese so the so lot of and the lot of nutrients are there which plant need Uh, some nutrient in large quantity, some nutrient in small quantity. In case if they don't get that nutrient, ultimately, uh, the it will hamper their growth, and and though the and the and the deficiency of those nutrients can easily uh, can be visible uh, when we see the the growth of the plant. Uh, symptoms like uh, uh, symptoms like yellowing of the leaf, or maybe uh, you can find wrinkles. In 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 certain cereals, if you see observe wrinkles or if you observe purple and red spots, uh, in in plant that may be because of the deficiency of the nutrient which plant actually need. So the water, there are many nutrients are there, the many elements are there. So I'm not going to chemistry part of that to understand which are soluble in water, which are not soluble in water. So but all the water soluble nutrient. can easily transfer from one end to the other end uh, by by water so water play very important a uh, role in the conduction of lot of a uh, lot of lot of components so specifically a uh, liquid or semi liquid component to to go from one end to the other end okay at the same time water is actually the, you know that everything is made of water and the water ultimately creates uh if a a, a in e a series of of continuous event through which the excess water which is keep getting absorbed by the root hair should should get should get loss also otherwise how the uh, how the concentration of cell sap can be maintained in the plant so cell sap is basically uh, it is a concentration of amino acid uh, sugar and mineral salts uh, it's a concentration of these elements uh, which are present in the vacuole of the cell okay and ultimately and ultimately when you see these cell sap 
So this cell sap is actually responsible. When you see this cell sap, this cell sap is actually responsible for the movement of mineral. So the for the movement of mineral uh, in the plant. So when we talk about movement of minerals in the plant, that happens for a process called active transport. That happens for the process called active transport. And 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 it is very important that the concentration of cell sap should be maintained and water play a very important role here. So water is keep on getting absorbed from the from the from the soil by the root uh, roots root ears. So these water which is keep on getting absorbed, they they move from one cell to another cell through the process of osmosis and where uh, these water molecules uh, have force of attraction between themselves. That force attraction is because of force of cohesion, and and then they stick to the walls of the xylem uh, through the force of adhesion. The so force of adhesion and force of cohesion they are the property of liquid. So when we study physics for chapter molecular model of liquid, they will study the force of cohesion and adhesion that result into the viscosity and surface tension uh, in liquid. So these force of cohesion and force of addition uh, that, that is actually being observed um, between the water molecule and between the water molecule and the walls of the xylem. And, and that will ultimately, this force will ultimately, some total, this force of attraction will ultimately uh, will, will bring together a capillary force and that capillary force will altogether will will create a chain of 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 event of evaporation of the water which is being absorbed by the root of the plant and that event is called transpiration okay this transpiration when we talk about transpiration transpiration creates cooling effect when we talk about transpiration transpiration creates cooling effect because transpiration is after all it is an evaporation only and evaporation, whenever the evaporation happens, the heat is getting absorbed. So why heat is getting absorbed? That we study in physics. So when you study the chapter uh, matter, when you study the concept of latent heat, so we will we'll study uh, these concepts. So when you talk about evaporation, it is an endothermic process where the heat is getting absorbed. And because, because of this transpiration, which is heat happening, uh, in the plant cells, so with the excess water which is getting absorbed, get released into the atmosphere, that transpiration will, will bring cooling effect. And that's why if you sit next to the sun during, uh, during uh, afternoon time, you feel a little bit of coolness if you are near next to the plant because of evaporation. And evaporation is named in plants, is called as transpiration, which is keep on happening. And, and that because of that transpiration, the, the cooler air try to settle down being heavier and that will create a cooling effect. So this transpiration, when we observe this transpiration in the name of evaporation in humans, then we can see a sweating. We sweat a lot in summer season and thereby it makes sure that our body temperature is maintained. So altogether, you can, you can connect the dots here so the water which is being absorbed by the root here, that water play a very significant role to make sure that the nutrients to reach to the one cell to the another cell. So and it, it also makes sure that the manufactured food to reach to the one one part where the food is manufactured to the another part where the food is getting delivered uh, very easily through the component of, of two partners. What what they have one is Xylem and other one is clear. Even any doubt. So once we understood these two terms, so you know that in the case of photosynthesis, uh, you know that uh, getting carbon dioxide uh, will not be very uh, difficult uh, situation for the stomata as we have a lot of carbon dioxide and because of human activities. And the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing only. But at the same time, when we look into the scenario around us, uh, we know that uh, ultimately carbon dioxide uh, is, a, is a greenhouse gas and it will, it will be responsible for the increase of temperature in our atmosphere. So anyway, we are not going to much discuss about geography part here. 
So you know that along with carbon dioxide, the other nutrient which is required for the photosynthesis is water. And this water is keep on getting absorbed by the root hair of the plant. So when you see uh, the root hair of the plant, so in the root hair of the plant, you have a main root. When you see the, the root hair in the plant, suppose this is the main root, this is the main root in the plant. Suppose this is the main root in the plant. It has a lot of lateral roots. It has a lot of lateral roots. So today it has a lot of lateral roots. It has a lot of lateral roots. These roots, lateral roots, they have numerous root here. These lateral roots, they have numerous uh, root here. They have numerous uh, root here. We call them the root here. The root here have, have, has, has, has more surface for, for, for more surface area. For more absorption of water and mineral, so they are they are they are highly segmented, and 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 and, and deep root air ultimately are are gonna be responsible for the movement of water and minerals. So the the movement of water inside the inside the cell wall of the plant, the movement of water which happens inside the cell wall of the plant, so that 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 event happens. Uh, through, uh, through a process which we call as osmosis. So this event happens through a process which we call as osmosis. So you know that uh, in soil, you have more concentration of water, while, uh, while if you compare the concentration of water in the soil, that would be more than the concentration of water uh, in, in, in the, inside the plant. So definitely it will be easier for the water molecule uh, to get enter into the uh, the root hairs of the plant and and the process through which this is possible uh, that is that process called osmosis so you can read about what is osmosis the movement of water molecule from the region of high concentration to the region of low concentration water absorption happens so this process called osmosis so that that, that looks very really easy in the case of of absorption of water molecule, but uh, that became difficult in the case of, of, of minerals here because you know that inside the root here uh, you have something called cell sap, and that cell sap consists of mineral salts, sugars, uh, amino acids. So altogether, the concentration of mineral inside the inside the uh, roots uh, inside the root hairs. So the concentration of mineral inside the root hair which is there altogether in the form of cell sap, their concentration will be more than the concentration of nutrient outside in the soil. So then, then, then the movement of minerals from, then the movement of mineral uh, from, from a region which is having low concentration of nutrient like soil to the movement of mineral to the region having the higher concentration of nutrient, uh, which we call a root here, that is next to the impossible and for that the event what happens we call that event as active transport so that event that event consume lot of energy because it is happening against against not against only against the gravity but along with against the gravity it is it's happening against the concentration so in in theory of thermodynamics we say that when two body come in contact with each other the heat always transfer from the Cold, hotter body to the colder body till both of them get the same temperature. Same like we have studied in current electricity also, how the <coughs> current moves in the circuit. Uh, the same way we studied about uh, any other law, and that the law in through which heat is being transferred, the law through, through the movement of how it happens in the nature. So, but, but here when we talk about active transport, it is happening uh, from a region of low concentration to the region of high concentration. And that, that movement of uh, which is consume a lot of energy is called as active transport. So through osmosis, water is getting absorbed through active transport. The minerals are getting absorbed. So that these water and minerals sum together when they are moving inside the, the liquid, when they are moving. Uh, inside the liquid, so that movement happens against the gravity because this water mineral you can understand they they get easily absorbed 
by the root hair. Let's talk a little bit about root hair. So when we talk about root hair, uh, the root hair have a upper layers. The root layers are made up of fully permeable cell wall. Uh, the, the, the root hair are made of fully permeable cell wall, which allows any soluble component uh, to, in, to get inside uh, the, uh, the, the root hair. And then, uh, then it is then it is followed by semi permeable cell membrane. So cell wall which is fully permeable, it allow every every constituent to enter inside the root here. But then it then it those those are come checked by semi permeable cell membrane. So which only only allow water molecules to get inside. So this this semi permeable cell membrane does only allow water molecule to come inside. So because of that, easily the water molecule got absorbed uh, and that process is called as osmosis, while there's, there's another process which we call as active transport, so that the minerals get absorbed. The minerals get absorbed and ultimately when the water mineral both get absorbed, then they reach to the upper part of the plant while working against the gravity uh, where that force which is being created, that force is the capillary force uh, which ultimately brings transpiration pull uh, and that transpiration pull is because of the force of addition and cohesion which is the nature of the liquid molecule and so that ultimately once, once these components which are being manufactured Ultimately, once once the flow of these components happens toward the end of the leaf, ultimately uh, this water mineral along with them uh, they carry a lot of nutrient and would make sure that the, all the end of the plant get those nutrients. Along with that, the, the water also helpful uh, to transfer the manufactured food which is there now in the form of grows to reach all part of the plant. So that all part of plant get benefit from the manufactured food which is being manufactured by the leaf of the plant. I hope you understand me. Here the very important component uh, which you need to study, uh, you need to understand is the transpiration. The transpiration is the continuous loss of water, it is a continuous loss of water from the leaf of the plant in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plant and ultimately ultimately transpiration uh, make sure that that uh, that uh, what transpiration make sure it make sure that the that the uh, water vapor is keep on getting released into the atmosphere and ultimately these water vapors some together they will bring rain and ultimately being important play a very important role in our survival uh, at the same time, when we talk about xylem, uh, phloem, parenchyma, so when we when we talk about uh, these components, uh, ultimately they they are responsible uh, for the movement of water and mineral, and and these movements keep on happening. And you need to understand uh, that uh, that 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 transport is all about sending or transferring the absorbed nutrient along with the food synthesized. So these absorbed nutrient, which is getting absorbed from the uh, root hairs of the plant, that that, ha that happening keep on every time. And so transpiration, what transpiration basically uh, makes sure the transpiration basically makes sure that the, that the excess water should always get released from the end of the plant so that the, these excess water should not impact the, the the growth of the plant in any possible way where the events like uh, temperature or sunlight or wind or humidity can impact the components of the transpiration because more is the sunlight or more is the temperature or more wind is flowing faster would be trans transpiration while if you have, have, a, have a humidity in the air automatically the rate of transpiration gets decreased because of that. So I hope uh, you people have understood what all I have done so far in this class. So with this much theoretical knowledge, if we have, then it will be more than enough for us to finish this chapter, very easy chapter that this is the 
first chapter in biology which we can easily understand without much pain in, in our system and ultimately uh, this notes if you refer my notes uh, understanding this event also become very easy for you so guys i hope uh, that you have understood what all i have done uh, for you in this session if you have any doubt feel free to ask your doubt and be in touch with me through your comments and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed. Thank you. See you all in the next class.